Well, good morning, River of Life. It's wonderful to be with you on this Easter morning and so exciting to be uh, together for Easter and to celebrate Easter in our homes. And one of the age-old sayings of the church is that Christ is risen and we say He's risen indeed. And that's the reason we celebrate Easter this morning. It's actually the greatest celebration of the church throughout history that our Lord Jesus, who came to earth and lived a, a sinless life, uh, He went to the cross and He died and He suffered and He bore the pain that we deserved and He went into the grave for three days. And on that first Easter morning uh, at a time just like this, He rose and the whole of history was changed. And so we celebrate Easter. We say Christ is risen because He's risen indeed. And that's the highlight of our Christian calendar, that today we celebrate all that Christ is in our lives, all that He is to the church, all that He is, in fact, to the whole human race, uh, that He is the risen Lord Jesus. But actually, the Easter story, the Good Friday, the cross, the time in the tomb when Jesus uh, spent those days, uh, and when He rose again, was actually Jesus' toughest three days on earth. It was actually His hardest trial. And whilst we celebrate Easter this morning, and it's a victory for Christianity, it's a victory for God, yet for Christ, it was His hardest time. It was His toughest trial. And I want to speak into that this morning. I want to speak a sermon that I've entitled, Peace Through Tough Times, or Peace Through the Trial. And as we celebrate Easter this morning, I also want you to reflect and think, just in this moment, what was your toughest time? What has been your toughest trial in your life? Maybe take a moment to look back and to think, when was the darkest time in my life? Perhaps it's right now. Perhaps it's during these days. Perhaps the effect of COVID-19 and the lockdown has brought some real stress and some real difficulty, some real trial into your life. I just want us to reflect that we do face tough times. And that's what I want to speak into this morning as we celebrate Easter. And I'm going to take it from verses that Jesus uh, spoke about and then a prayer of His in John. Uh, we're going to start in John 16 and I'm going to read initially verse 33. So if you've got your Bibles, you can open that up, John 16, 33. And then I'm going to read Jesus' most famous comment about difficulties and about tough times. Why right, shall we read that together? John 16 and verse 33. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. It's incredible that Jesus, as He prepares to go to His greatest trial, as He sits with His disciples and talks to them about the fact that He's going to go to the cross and die, and in a little while He said, I'll be back, but it'll be a difficult time for you. Uh, he speaks about trials and hardships. And after sharing this with his disciples, he says these famous words, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. The first thing we gather from facing tough times and difficulties is that Christ wants us to have peace in him. He says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And when we read these scriptures, and we know the context that Jesus is speaking in at, at the, the doorway of his greatest trial. We can draw strength from this. Uh, the first thing we see is that Jesus warns us. He gives us forewarning that in this world we will have trouble. In this world we will have tough times. That trial you've thought about, Jesus has, has forewarned us to say these things will come. And the reason that is, is because we live in a fallen world. Since Adam and Eve and the fall in the Garden of Eden, we live in a world that is fallen, that is ultimately sinful. And many of the trials and the hard times and the difficulties we face are a consequence of the fall, of Adam's fall and generally the, the fallen human race, but also of our own silly mistakes and silly decisions for which we face the consequences. So as Jesus warns us of tough times, it's because we live in a fallen world. Uh, similarly, as we give ourselves to Christ, as we put our, our hope and our faith in Christ, as we believe in Him, so we join the kingdom of light. The Bible speaks about uh, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And those who've put their faith in Christ have moved from the kingdom of darkness 
to the kingdom of light. So by nature, we are now in enemy territory. We live our lives, we live out our faith, we live out all we do in an opposition, in a, in a world that is against the kingdom of God. And for that reason, also, we face opposition. In John 15, part of the things that Jesus told his disciples is that the world will hate you as it has hated me. And wow, that's strong words. But actually, that's the truth of it, that we as believers live in enemy territory. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world that is opposed to the gospel. And therefore, we can expect to face hard times. We can expect to swim upstream. We can expect to, to encounter situations that seem to be against us. And Jesus forewarns us of that. The other thing he says in, this, in verse 33 here is, Take heart. Take heart. I have overcome the world. And that's what we celebrate this morning, that at the cross, that the Easter, the very first Easter where Jesus died and rose again, he conquered this world. He conquered death, the final enemy. And we can take heart because he says, I have overcome the world. So whatever trial we face, whatever difficulty we face, whatever hardship we face, we can put ourselves in that place to say, I trust in Jesus. I get my peace in him because he has overcome the world. And I love that verse. It says, in me you will have peace. Not in the world, not in our bank balance, not in the car we drive or the country we live in, not even in our own health, but our peace comes from being in Christ, from our belief and our faith in Him. And that's what He says to us. He says, you will have hard times, you will have trials, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And again, in John 16, just before he says these verses, he speaks to the disciples about a new relationship that they will have with the Father. He says, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to go through my greatest trial that you would have new relationship with God. And that was the greatest benefit of the whole of the Easter story. The whole of the cross was Jesus going through a trial, going through a tough time, paying the price uh, for the sin that separated us from God. And because of that, because of the trial, we now have that greater relationship, that ability to connect with Father, Son, and indeed Holy Spirit for greater relationship. And another reason I believe that we face trials and we face difficulties in this life is to call us back to God, to call us into greater relationship with God. I don't know how many of you have read a bit more of your Bible these days, have, have prayed a bit more in these days. And even this trial and this difficult time that we go through in COVID-19 has called thousands of people back into relationship with God. And indeed, for ourselves, often the trials and the difficulties and the hard times is a chance for us to put our faith and our hope back in God, back in uh, the one whom we serve and the one in whom our faith is. And so that's another reason we have difficulties and we have trials. So just in that one verse where Jesus says, you will have trials, take heart, I've overcome the world, uh, and in me you can have peace, is some of the reasons that we face these difficulties and these trials in this world. And having done that, I want you to think again now about that trial or that hard time that you thought of at the beginning. Perhaps it was a business deal that went wrong. Perhaps it's that you, you are now unemployed. Perhaps it's grief, the losing of a loved one, or uh, perhaps it's persecution from outside. Um, I want to tell you about the two toughest times in my life. The first one, when I was 12, uh, just a young, a young boy, uh, my father left home uh, for circumstances that were beyond my control. Uh, Dad wasn't coming home anymore. And just at a time when a young man needs his father and needs somebody to to encourage him and support him and, and speak life into him, my dad left. And it was possibly some of the darkest times of my growing up. Uh, I was then raised uh, miraculously, uh, a heroic or, uh, effort by my mum. And yet I look back at those days as some of the toughest and some of the hardest. And yet, you know what? I see now some 30 years later that God was orchestrating it for my good. That I think if my father hadn't uh, left home or hadn't uh, been separated from my mom, perhaps I would never have had the opportunity uh, to go on a Christian camp, to hear the gospel, uh, and in fact give my life to Christ. So what seemed to be the darkest time in my life, God was actually working it uh, for my good and indeed for my salvation. Uh, and the other time was just recently, three years ago, uh, my mother passed away. And I just shared with you that she was the one who raised me. She was the person perhaps that I was closest to uh, in all of my upbringing. 
and she passed away just three years ago. And again, that was a very tough time. It was a dark time, but it was an incredible time where I felt my faith in God had to be real. My trust in who God was in my life had to be real. And I was able to walk through that time and grow in my relationship with God because of the, the difficulty and the trial that I went through. And I believe that's what God does for us. Even in the tough times, He brings out greater faith, greater trust, uh, greater depth of relationship with Him. Do you know the amazing thing is, after my mum died, uh, all three of the men I work with in the senior leadership team at River of Life Church lost a parent. Uh, one of them lost both mum and dad, uh, and the, the third just, just the dad. But the trial I had just been through, suddenly I was able to walk alongside good friends of mine saying, I know what you're feeling, I've been through that. And again, that's why God often leads us through difficult times and leads us through tough times. And just as we uh, look to see what we can learn from Jesus through tough times, I wanted to look at his prayer after he says these words in 1633. From John 17, verse 1, Jesus prays an incredible prayer as he goes to the cross, as he goes into his greatest trial. And I'd love us to learn the lessons perhaps today before we face the trial or whilst we're in the trial that would keep us strong, that would give us a foundation in the trial. And this is what Jesus prayed, John 17 and verses 1 up to 5. After Jesus said this, he looked to heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give them eternal life, that he would give eternal life to all those you had given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on the earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Wow, this is an incredible prayer. This is a fantastic building block for our lives, not just as we face trials, but all of our lives. But particularly as Jesus went to the cross, as he went to that first Easter weekend uh, and gave his life for, for the world, this was his prayer. And I think we can draw from this. The first thing he prays is, God, would you glorify yourself? He says, God, as I'm glorified, as the spotlight is put on me, as I'm lifted up on the cross, Father, would you glorify yourself? And the Lord Jesus prayed that. And I believe that can be our prayer, not only in suffering, but all of our lives. If I was to ask you, what's your primary ambition in life? I pray and I believe that you would say to glorify God. And indeed, the mission statement of our church to glorify God by extending His kingdom through planting and strengthening New Testament churches. Every one of us exists from our very creation, from the reason we were born, to bring God glory. So what more when we face trial, when we face difficulty, to come to God and say, God, would you be glorified in this trial? Would you be glorified in this difficulty? And I love it that as Jesus is lifted up, it says, as he's put on the cross, as the spotlight is put on him, his prayer is, Lord, would you be glorified? And I believe often God will take believers. God will take people who, have, who are strong in faith and uh, have a real relationship with God and allow them to go through difficult times, almost putting the spotlight on them that they would be able to glorify God by the way they go through that time. And as you go into difficult times and trials, may your prayer be, Lord, glorify yourself. The decisions we make in tough times, the, the words we speak, the people we engage with, are all part of how God will be glorified. So often I see brothers and sisters in difficult times making bad decisions, making decisions that don't glorify God. And I would exhort you that as you go into a tough time, as you go through trials, pray, God, give me the wisdom to glorify you. Uh, you look at Job. What had Job done wrong? He had done nothing wrong. But God said, I want you to see how this man endures hardship and glorifies me through the trial. And that was the prayer of Jesus. And that can be our prayer. That Lord Jesus, as I go through this, as I face tough times, allow me to glorify you in my decisions, in my testimony, in the way I handle people, in the way I encourage people. Even those who do us wrong and persecute us, we can glorify God by our response. And that was Jesus' primary prayer as he went to the cross. 
Then the second thing that Jesus prayed is for the gospel to go out. He says, Lord, you have given me authority that I might give eternal life to all those you have given me. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Jesus' second prayer in the time of trial, as he goes to the cross, is, Lord Jesus, that they would have eternal life, that people would come to Christ. Uh, and indeed, we know that Easter story and the cross is all about Jesus winning eternal life for us. But we too can say, Lord Jesus, as I go through this trial, would it be an opportunity for the gospel to be shared in people's lives around me? In fact, sometimes the trials we go through is God getting our attention to come back to Him or even to come to Him. You may not know Christ. You may never have put your faith in Him. And the trial you go through would be a chance for you to reflect on what is really important in my life. What do I actually believe? And come to a place where you say, I believe in Jesus. I believe in His goodness and I put my faith in Him. So often trials in our lives personally and for the people around us are an opportunity for the gospel to come through and we can pray that Lord Jesus as I go through this difficulty would you bring people to the gospel would you allow this time in my life to draw people my family my friends my loved ones even onlookers to you and it's a chance to put our hope and our faith in Christ in God uh, personally and for our friends and loved ones and you know there's three things that will last forever. There's three things that are eternal. And it's this eternal perspective we must keep in times of trial. The first is the Word of God. In times of trial, throw yourself into the Word of God. Put yourself and your faith and your family on the promises of God. And He will prove Himself faithful. The second one is the souls of men. That the Word of God is eternal. Our souls are eternal. Uh, that part of us which will live forever. And the truth is that your soul and the souls of everyone around us will spend eternity either in heaven with God or in hell separated from God and that, that's just a fact and times of trial are an opportunity for us to consider where is my soul going to spend eternity and that's going to last forever the third thing that will last forever is the church the gathering of the saints all those souls who have put their hope and faith in Christ the community the body of Christ the Bible calls it that's an eternal uh, structure and at times of trial and times of difficulty I encourage you to put yourself at the in the church be be committed to the church allow those times of difficulty to build the church and also for the church to support you and build you in your time of trial so those three things I believe we should be focusing on in times of challenge in times of difficulty that that we would focus on the Word of God and allow him to prove himself faithful that we would focus on the souls the eternal souls of men and the gospel going out we would we would focus on the church and the building of the kingdom of God and you know the cross was exactly that did you see how Jesus put himself in the promises and the faithfulness of God as he died on the cross he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He gave himself to the promises and to the faithfulness of his Father. He did it for the souls of men. He did it for the eternal souls of people and for the establishment of his church. And the reason we celebrate Easter is because every one of those came through the victory that Jesus won on the cross. That the church was established, that souls were being saved, uh, that, that the word of God, the faithfulness that he had prophesied for years uh, through the Old Testament finally was fulfilled in Jesus at the cross. So you see these three things coming through Jesus' greatest trial and the cross and it can happen in our lives as well. So often in the difficulty and in the trial, God is working for good that we don't even know. You know, when Jesus went into the tomb, into the grave, he could do nothing but commit himself to his Father. And sometimes in our trial and in our darkest moments, all we can do is say, Lord Jesus, I commit myself to you. And God works incredible things for good through those times. And then the third thing Jesus prayed is that he would be able to complete the work that the Father gave him to do. Do you see that? He says, Lord, I have completed the work that you gave me to do. And I believe each one of us has a work God has given us to do. God has given us gifts and abilities and talents that uh, each of us has a specific work, a specific passion, a specific place and contribute, contribution to society that God has given us to do. And in a time of trial, we mustn't be distracted from that. 
we must continually use those times to just double click. Am I doing the work that God has called me to do? Am I in the place that God would have me do? And allow the, the trial just to reboot us and say, Lord, am I doing what I'm called to do? Am I doing the thing that you've asked me to do? And once we get that clear, we can be confident that we're going to go through the trial. Because God has never let us down and he never will let us down. And the fact that you're doing his work isn't a, a recipe or a formula for his protection. It's actually saying, God, I realize why I'm facing the trial now. I realize why I'm facing opposition. It's because you've given me a work to do. You've given me a kingdom job and you want me to carry on that. And the truth of the matter is, folks, that when we are doing the work of God on this earth until he calls us home, uh, he will protect us he will keep us he will provide for us it may be in sickness and through sickness it may be in poverty and through poverty Where, wherever we find ourselves on this earth provided we're committed to his will and his kingdom he will continue to be our provision and our source you know David Livingston the great explorer the great missionary uh, the man who founded the Victoria Falls and I've enjoyed this week reading about that experience he had uh, he would walk through rivers infested with crocodiles and he would face malaria and got malaria seven or eight times uh, every year as he walked through Africa. Uh, people would ask him, Mr. Livingston, are you not afraid to die? Are you not uh, putting your life at risk by crossing these rivers and putting yourself in the way of disease? And, and David Livingston replied to them, I am immortal until my work for the Lord is done. And that's an incredible perspective and one that we can carry to say, if I'm doing the work of God, if I'm completing the work that Jesus gave us to do, uh, he will keep us and he will continue to provide for us as we go through those things. So I trust those are helpful for you. As you face your next trial, remember that Lord Jesus, glorify yourself as I go through this. Lord Jesus, would you bring souls into your kingdom as we go through these difficult days? Lord Jesus, would you help me to complete the work that you gave me to do. And I'd just like to land this morning by praying for us. I know many of us are going through trials right now, whether they're related to COVID-19 or not. Uh, the fact that we're in the world, the fact that we're believers of Christ, we will be facing trials. And I want to pray for you. I want uh, to pray a blessing over you. It's actually Aaron's blessing that comes in numbers. And it's a, it's a blessing that has become more prevalent in the world today as some of our fantastic worship leaders around the world have got hold of it and began to sing it out. And it's such powerful words. So I'd love you in your homes this morning to gather around, gather your family around you, put your arm around your wife and your children or whoever's there with you. Uh, think about those trials. Think about these days. And then I want to pray this blessing over you. Shall we pray together? The Lord bless you and keep you. Father God, I commit our people to you this morning. I thank you that you've promised to be our God and our guide, even through difficult times. And I pray the Lord bless you and keep you this morning, River of Life Church, and those listening to this broadcast. Would the Lord bless you and keep you. Would the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, we pray you would uh, shine on us. We thank you that uh, your grace is sufficient for us. We thank you that your grace empowers us to face difficult days and tough times. And Father, I ask for a shining of the Lord on these people this morning. Would the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace? Lord Jesus, this morning we realize that peace is not a commodity that this world offers. That there's only peace in Jesus, as you said in John 16. And I ask that the Lord's face would turn towards these people this morning, would turn towards us, and that you would give us this peace through the trial. We bless you this morning for Easter Sunday. We thank you for what you did at the cross. We thank you that you went through a trial for us. You glorified God. You went there because of the souls of men and their eternal salvation. You went there because it's the work that the Lord Jesus, that, that the Father gave you to do. And I thank you for the cross this morning and the celebration that we can have in Easter. And I ask for many testimonies of people going through difficult times and tough times glorifying you preaching the gospel, completing the work that you gave them to do. We bless you and we thank you this morning for your wonderful victory on the cross. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.